Hello everyone. You know, slabs are used to produce sheets. Blooms are used to produce beams. And billets are used for tube manufacturing. But do you know how are these shapes produced? Watch this video to the end to learn about one of the fascinating manufacturing processes. Did you know that the casting process is not limited to producing complicated metallic parts but is also used to produce these standard shapes? To overcome the inefficiency and problems associated with steel making in the traditional forms as ingots, continuous or strand casting is used. This process was suggested by Henry Bessemer in 1856. However, it was used to produce non-ferrous metal in the 1930s. Later in the 1960s, it was improved and widely used for steel production. In the mid-1980s, continuous casting grew into the biggest casting method, exceeding conventional ingot steel casting. Today, about 95% of the world's steel production is made by continuous casting, and a great number of steel qualities are cast in very wide variety of dimensions. The process starts by transforming the molten metal from the heating furnace to the casting machine inside a ladle, where it is cleaned and blown by nitrogen to equalize its temperature. After that, the molten metal is poured into an intermediate pouring vessel. This vessel is called tundish, where impurities are skimmed off. This tundish can hold up to 6,000 pounds, elevated about 65 feet, lined with refractory material and contains submerged nozzles that allow the molten metal to flow into copper molds. These molds control the shape of the casted material. Water jackets cool these molds, so the first solidification occurs at the metal mold interface. The thickness of the solidified shell increases progressively during its travel downward, typically at a speed of about 1 inch per second. At the mold exit, the shell must be thick enough about three-quarters inch to support the liquid pool. For the metal to solidify further, it is sprayed by water along its travel path. Solid lubricants, such as graphite, coat the copper molds to reduce friction and adhesion at the mold metal interface. Moreover, the molds vibrate to reduce friction and sticking. At the machine end, the strand is cut off and transferred to a rolling mill. The cutting is done to the desired length by either shearing or torch. After cutting, the continuously cast metal is kept to cool down and stacked for shipping or is fed directly into rolling mills for further thickness reduction and to be shaped as channel and eye beam. The important challenge in this process is to cast steel continuously without any interruptions and defects. Solidification control is important for surface and internal quality. Steel cleanliness is determined essentially already before the casting process in the ladle and in the tundish, but can be influenced even in the casting operation. The important process control parameters and solidification are steel composition, casting speed, mold level, lubricant type, mold oscillation, liquid steel temperature, cooling conditions after the mold, as well as parameters affecting the flow phenomena in the mold. In modern facilities, the process is done under computer control to monitor and adjust the preceding parameters and consequently, achieve good quality products. In this video, the continuous casting process is explained. The next video presents the process's advantages, disadvantages, and defects. So, stay tuned subscribe to the Al Jazari channel, and activate the alarm to be notified of the new videos. If you have any queries or suggestions, please write a comment. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it with others who might find it interesting. See you in the next video.